Welcome back to another Stunt Culture Fast Track Guide. Today we're going to go over the back layout. You're back with Cody and your name, sir? <laughs> and Jackson Corkett. Welcome back to Sun Culture. Today we're going to be going over the back layout. We're going to do a few drills, a few exercises for you guys, hopefully getting you guys up and running with it as quick as possible. Just remember, with the layout, there is a ton of progressions with this skill because it's extremely important to have the correct core strength, and this is what people struggle with. So the ones we are going to take you with are the ones that we've had success with, but if you get stuck, there obviously are progressions, that other progressions that you can use We as well. may even do a a part two on the layout just because it's such an important skill to have progressing through any like uh, like one half fulls doubles all the skills that you're going to progress on through after the layout it's it's a very very important shape very important skill so we might touch base on it another on the, in another video yeah but today this is the fast track guide so we'll, jackson is going to take you through that first progression first progression we're going to start off with is um a pike so it's not quite a lot of people skip the pike, a lot of people tend to go from their like tucks through to their lay. I don't recommend it because it's a completely different shape. At least with the pike you're still having to get that straight leg point toes, like, a little bit more hip drive um, and then you can phase out of that pike. It's not the only way to teach a layout but it's what I've had success with in the past using. So I'm going to show you a pike now. So standing up, same set for a tuck and lay. Um, standing up as aggressively as I can, arms up next to my ears, squeezing my core, squeezing my glutes. And then as I ride to the top of my set, I put my toes in close to my chest and get that, get that shape. The layout progressing on from the pike, um, you want to think about like, I, I tend to turn my hands in through my shape because it rounds my shoulders, rounds my upper back, so I get that, that line a bit better. But going from that pike, it's just a, it's a matter of squeezing your hips towards your wrist and getting that shape and then up on your toes. I'll do a, one more pike for you. Just make sure you watch as well that he keeps his chin down the whole time. Um, a lot of people say keep a neutral, neutral position, but I like people to keep their chin down even a little bit more because the main habit that people have is throwing their head back and it's gonna completely change that shape and gonna make you arch. So really focus on keeping your chin down the whole way through the pike or the leg. One more important point just to quickly make too is your entry into the skill, so from the round off or the handspring is really important too. Um, if you enter through an arch shape and then come through out of your round off with your chin out or archy upper back or archy lower back, you're going to stand up archy in the skill. So you want to get that nice tight squeeze shape, hollow shape, nice and straight all the way through the uh, prerequisite skills like the round off or the handspring, whatever you're doing. So the first exercise that I'm going to show you is with a resistance band. You're going to be sitting down in a pike shape in front of the mat. You're going to wrap the resistance band around your feet. So what you're doing here is keeping your arms straight. You're going to swing all the way up to your ears. You're going to drive through your hips while squeezing your glutes, squeezing your core, and your arms are going to come all the way up to your ears. Now when you do this, this is we're focusing on the exercise to build that strength. We're going to exaggerate driving through our hips a little bit. You're not going to drive through your hips just as much as we are right now when you do the layout but this is just to build that required strength. So when you do it, sitting up nice and close, you wanna snap fast and drive through. Make sure your glutes are squeezed, your core is nice and tight, and you're holding those arms next to your ears. This shape that he's in right now, this is like, a lot of people will take this as what the layout should look like, not quite. Your core will be down a little bit flatter and your hips won't be as open, but just for the sake of like learning and like strengthening those muscles, over-exaggerating that hip drive and holding that shape is what's gonna help so make sure that you do that a few times. You're gonna to have to repeat this probably for a few weeks or even a few months, depending how long it takes you to get that shape. Cause this is the hardest part is actually getting into that position and being able to hold it. It's one thing to be able to do it when you're stable, but it's another to be able to do it in the air. The other thing is really think about that fast snap through your arms. So again, I'll show you, snap, hold, back down. Back down. All right, so next progression, we've got some boxes stacked up. 
I'm gonna round off and then I'm gonna like rebound up, aim to get the upper half of my back or like my shoulder blades with my arms up tall. I'm gonna leave up onto that box. So I don't wanna be getting all my back and all my bum up onto the box and rebounding all the way up like you would for like a tuck drill. I wanna uh, try and mimic that like lever and like that, that position. I'm driving my hips and toes up through that lay shape as you'll see now. I'll show you that one more time. So making sure you're really squeezing your core, squeezing your glutes, pointing your toes away from your body and being really strong through those arms. Getting those arms up and stopping them right around your ears is what's gonna help you lift and then allow your hips and toes. Before we get into the next couple of exercises, we're gonna show you what the layout should actually look like in the air. So sit down. So, chest up, sit up. So, if you've come from out of your round off or your handspring, whatever it is, your arm should be next to your ears, chin down. So, we're picturing we're, we're standing up right now. So, you stand up, rebound tall. So, you've just stood up as tall as you could. Now, your arms stay in this place, okay? So, because you're obviously reaching up to the, uh, the roof, and then everything wants to lever up to this point. So, what will happen is Cody's arm will stay there, and then he'll go to that lay shape, so we'll manage to get to here. Just like the lever that I showed you in the last drill. And then from this position, you don't bring your arms down to your hips or down to your like legs. You actually keep driving up, keep driving up, keep driving up, and then you meet this place. This is the position through the very top of your leg that you'll hit. And it doesn't come from bringing your arms down. A lot of athletes think, arm um, down. But it's actually getting your set as tall as you can and then levering your hips and your toes up to your hands. So to do that, we're gonna take you through two, well, it's a similar exercise, but there's two variations. So I'm gonna show you one variation and then Jackson's gonna show you the other variation. The other one. So if you have store bars or something similar, this is the variation that you can use. Hanging, hanging onto the top, go through your body and make sure that everything's squeezed together. So your legs are together, your core squeeze, your glutes squeeze, and your arms are squeezed in nice and close. From here, think about squeezing your glutes and driving up through your hips. So you don't want to have a broken shape and you don't want to be arched. Hold that tight shape and then come up nice and slow. If you can only come up a couple inches and back down, that's fine. It's better to hold that position than to be trying to come up too far and break. And make sure you're leaving through your hips, squeezing your glutes. This is an extremely hard exercise. It's, it's takes a very long time to develop the core strength to actually hold this shape and lift it up. So if you get like a friend or a coach to help you, just like lever up and try and do as much as you can and then like slowly get them to do less and less, that'll really benefit you. So here's the variation. I'm gonna start off with the, uh, the simple version to like help develop the strength and then I'll show you what you're actually aiming for. So to candlestick up, pull it like that and then to just really slowly lever yourself down as slow as possible. Really maintain that shape, squeezing your core down, squeezing your glutes, pointing your toes. Now, once you've developed a lot more strength and you can feel that shape getting a bit better, you wanna try and pull up from the ground, maintaining that tight shape, engaging your core. Don't let your back arch, you don't wanna be lifting up, opening your hips. And then slow down. Same thing, this is super difficult, so if you have a friend that can pitch your toes, do that until you can get to the point where you can do it by yourself. All right, next drill, guys. We're gonna do the same thing as what we did before with that lever, but now we're gonna extend all the way up through the top with our hip drive and pointing our toes and keeping that nice tight line. And then we're gonna extend through and we're gonna block through our shoulders, pop through the top of our hands, and we're gonna actually roll over into a front support. I highly recommend that you can do a back extension roll the, uh, like this, straight arms, hitting with the blades of your hands and then flipping through. If not, I would just recommend doing that lever over and over until you can get through to that extension roll. So I'll show you that now. Do a couple more for you guys. With this particular drill, I'm admitting fault. I have a bad habit of opening up through my hips and leaving my feet behind. So I'll really try and pull my toes up a little bit more for you guys just to show you that proper shape. I'll do one more. 
All right, so the next exercise that we're gonna go over is gonna help with that calf strength so that when you're coming out of the, re the round of rebound or the round of handspring, you're gonna have that pop and that power leading into the lat. Because if you don't have that power coming from, initiating from the round of or the round of handspring, you're gonna struggle to get into that shape. So this one's just calf raises, but what I'm gonna get you guys to do is use ankle weights, or if you don't have ankle weights, you can just hold some kettlebells or some weights. Make sure when you do it, your feet are squeezed together, rolling your ankles in. You're gonna push all the way up to your toes and back down. At the moment, I'm just doing it on level ground, but you can also do this on a ledge just to get a full extension all the way up and all the way down. Just push up, back down. I want you to explode up and then slow on the way back down. When you do this, I want you to do at least 100 of these. You should be trying to do 100 a day. Again, if this gets too easy, do it off a ledge and get that full extension. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you um, entry into the layout, a position out of a handspring. You can do the same thing out of a round off, but I'm gonna do it out of a standing handspring. So I'm gonna block with my toes behind me, squeeze my core, squeeze my glutes, stand up through, drive my hips through, pull my toes, and then I'm gonna land in a disc shape on my back on this mat. So I'll show you that now. This just really helps the entry into the layout and the, the body shape and the angle that you need to try and chase. So I'll show you that again. Make sure you hold that shape all the way through to the landing and even for a three counts after that, just continue to hold that shape. Okay, so moving on to the next exercise, we're gonna use a resistance band to do front delt raises. Most of your power is gonna come from your round off or your round off handspring. If you don't have the power coming from that, you're gonna to struggle to get into shape. Apart from that, Leading into the lay, you're gonna need that fast snap with your arms, making sure that your core stays tight, you're squeezing your glutes and you're squeezing your legs. You wanna swing up as fast as you can and then snap slightly in front, making sure not to open too much so that your back bends. So when we do this, straight arms, squeeze your core, glutes and legs, you're gonna snap and then slow back on the way back through. Snap up fast and slow on the way back. When you're doing these, try and do like 12 reps and do four sets. All right, guys, so I'm going to attempt the round off lay now with a spot. So Cody's going to spot through my, uh, around my shoulder blades and then my hamstrings. So as I come up, hit that shape, he's just going to help, like, guide me through that shape and then just give me a little bump if I need it. I might baby a bit, make him work for it. That was a big bump. <laughs> little bump. But that just goes to show how much the spotter can help. If I squeeze and just hit that shape, stand tall, they can help you a lot. So just as long as you're hitting those lines, your coach or like a fellow athlete who knows what they're doing can really help. So I'll do that by myself now. I'm gonna focus as hard as I can on driving my arms up between my eyes and my ears and stopping them very aggressively, squeezing my chest, my core, my glutes, and pointing my toes. You want to think about pointing your toes by squeezing your um, quad muscles. So like if you squeeze your quad and tense it, you can't, you can't bend your leg. To bend your leg, you have to release that muscle or stop thinking about it. And by doing so, when you punch your toes and squeezing your bum, you're gonna get that better line, tighter shape, and the layout's just gonna look better. Good, I'll show you that on the floor now. I'm gonna do it out of a handspring, just to, um, as well as the round off on the floor to show you the difference in how to stand up and just the same lines that you need between blocking out of that round off and blocking out of that handspring. Now do a handspring. We're gonna give you one more exercise just to help with that core strength. Any core exercises that you, that you do are going to help with the layout, um, but the one that I'm gonna give you right now is just to practice holding that straight line through movement. So we're gonna do plank, but they're plank up downs. So you're gonna start on your forearms, on your toes, same thing, squeezing your glutes, legs, core. From here, you're going up onto your right hand, and then the, your left hand. When you do that, you're pushing right up nice and tall, and when you come up and down, you're, not, you're trying not to sway through your hips at all. So try and stay as still as possible. So down, up. When you do this exercise, you are gonna feel a burn through your shoulders, but if you're doing it correctly and you're squeezing tight through your core and your glutes, you're gonna feel sore through that, those areas as well. Another quick variation of what Cody was just talking about. If you hold a plank like this, 
get that nice tight shape, pushing up through the top of half of your back, squeezing your glutes down, and then very, very controlled, just start creeping forward. Yeah, maintaining that shape. Good. This one burns. This one sucks. <laughs> but if you want to get that shape nice and tight, have a lot of good strength in there, recommend doing it. In the comments below, let us know your favorite layout drill that's worked for you or worked for a friend or another exercise that you would like to see us show you. Let us know if you want us to do another, another video on the leg, going a little bit more in depth. Thanks for watching. Peace. Like, subscribe and comment.